Hey, what's up, guys? So, up next, we're gonna do Julio See You When You Get There featuring 40 Thieves. Now, I am familiar with the song. I've heard it quite a few times. You know, it was at the end of the movie Nothing to Lose, I believe. Uh, it fit perfectly with that movie. That movie was hilarious. And also, you know, had a really good message behind it. You know what I'm saying? It, it really did. Uh, this right here, y'all, my all-time favorite song from Coolio. Uh, you know, of course, his most popular song, Gangster's Paradise. Uh, really a great song also. Uh, you know, and, and even that song also had a really great message behind it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to do that one too. Uh, the reason why is because the message behind both of these songs, which this one I'm not too for sure about, I know the context that was given to it because of the movie Nothing to Lose, which also tied in perfectly with Gangster's Paradise. All right. Um, but the context behind the song itself, I'm not too for sure about. I don't think I've ever seen the video to it, though. Uh, so I, don't, I really don't even know if this is a music video. It might be. All right. But look. Uh... You know, I found out that he passed away a while back. Um, you know, life is short, man. It really is, y'all. Oh, man, y'all. 90s nostalgia right here for sure. Now I see places and faces, and things you ain't never thought about thinking. If you ain't peeped, then you must be drinking and smoking. Pretending that you're broken, but you're broken. Let me get you open. Now little Timmy got his diploma and little Timmy got life. And Tamika around the corner just took her first set off the bike. The other homie shot the other homie and ran off with his money. And when the other homie turned about it, they thought that it was funny. But who's the dummy? Because now you done lost the hustler. A down ass brother. Now, why is it showing clips from Nothing to Lose? Was this song made for that movie? Is that what's going on here? Uh, maybe it was, because it looks like it might have been that came from Coolio's channel. Hold on a minute. I'll be right back. I'm going to have to do some research on this, y'all. All right, y'all. As far as I can tell, uh, it wasn't made for that movie specifically, but it was featured in that movie. And that movie also came out at the same time. All right. So I don't know. Uh, it could be, though, but... I don't know, y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I've been replaced by a buster, and though I got love for you, I know I can't trust you, because my crew is rolling homers, and your crew is rolling dusters. And just because of that, you act like you don't like a brother no more. I guess that's just the way it go. I ain't trying to preach. I believe I can reach, but your mind ain't prepared. I see you when you get there.
So basically, what we got here is a message. If you are, you know, out here hurting people, doing wicked shit, you know, messing people over, uh, you know, trying to get, you know, more and more stuff for yourself, being selfish, uh, you know, and then he showed the domestic violence and stuff like that, right? So what he's saying is that person just needs, uh, could be that that person needs someone to send them a message to say, this ain't right and you need to stop. And when you get that message, then I'll see you. I will see you when you get that message and you understand it. You know what I'm saying? I, th I think that's what the song is talking about. Alright, another thing we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and check out a lyric video for this, alright? You know, I got to break this all the way down, you know what I'm saying? This is amazing. Okay, stand up for something or lay down in the game. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy right there, y'all. Uh. It's up to you to make it be. I guess I'll see you when you see me. I'll see you. Mm. He said, I'll see you when you see me. So I think he's saying even... I have a message I need to receive as well. So we both have clarity and we both have that understanding of each other. Maybe that's what's going on here. You know what I'm saying? That's that's something else. Right. Now what is this uh, Tommy Boy thing? Was that a label he was under or something? I, I don't know. Tommy Boy Classics. Uh, Y'all let me know what that is, if y'all know. All right. I'm sure you guys probably do. Uh, You know, I haven't listened to Coolio in quite some time. I mean, I grew up listening to it. You know what I'm saying? I absolutely love Gangster's Paradise. Um, and then there was one of his CDs I had when I was a kid. I don't remember which one it was. But I do know that it had the Cruising song on it. Uh, which that was a really good song. But that's the only one I remember for sure that was on that CD. All right. Uh. And I could be not even saying the right name of the song, because that's how long it's been, uh, you know, since I actually listened to that CD, all right? 
All right, y'all. We got a lyric video pulled up. I hope these lyrics are right. You know what I'm saying? I love this song, y'all. Now I see places and faces, things you ain't never thought about thinking. If you ain't peeped, then you must be drinking and smoking. Pretending that you're looking, but you're broken. Let me get He says if you ain't peak, then you must be drinking and smoking. I think he means if you ain't interested. Let me check something real quick, y'all. Yeah, I think that's what he's talking about. If you ain't interested to even look and hear what I'm trying to tell you, then you must be drinking and smoking. Faces, things you ain't never thought about thinking. If you ain't peeped, then you must be drinking and smoking. Pretending that you're looking, but you're broken. Let me... He says, pretending that you're low-key, but you're broke. And let me get you open. I'm not too sure what he means by that, y'all. Pretending that you're low-key. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Now, I know what low-key means. That means on the down low. Uh, something you don't really want to announce out loud. You know what I'm saying? Um, pretending that you're low-key. Places and faces, things you ain't never thought about thinking. If you ain't peeped, then you must be drinking and smoking. Pretending that you're looking, but you're broken. So maybe saying pretending that you're interested, but you're not. Maybe that's what he's saying. I'm not exactly for sure. Uh, y'all put in the comments if y'all understand that better. All right. So Timmy got his diploma and little Timmy got life. And Tamika around the corner just took her person off the pipe. The other homie shot the other homie. And Tamika around the corner just took her first hit off the pipe. Oh, man. Uh, it, It's a lose-lose situation right here, y'all. He ran off with his money, and when the other homies heard about it, they thought that it was funny. Now I see places and faces. Things you ain't never thought about thinking. If you ain't peeped, then you must be drinking and smoking. Pretending that you're looking, but you're broken. Let me get you open. Now, little Timmy got his diploma. In. Uh, I don't know. Y'all, y'all, let me know uh, about this line that I'm not understanding. All right. Uh, the pretending that you're low key, but you're broke. So he says, little Timmy got his diploma, and little Jimmy got life. Oh, wait a minute. I thought he was saying little Jimmy got a life. But he said little Jimmy got life. Like life in prison. After he killed Timmy, I think, is what he's saying. Oh, man. See, it's, it, it starts to all fit together if you take your time and start to put everything together. Um, at least for me. You know, I, I can't uh, get everything like that, like right off the bat, right as I'm hearing something. All right? That just don't work for me. I got to go through line by line and start to slowly put everything together. All right? And I think that's, I think I got it. I think I know exactly what he's talking about, except for the low key line. I don't quite understand that one. I'm thinking it probably fits in with the, uh, the diploma and the life sentence. All right. I'm just, I'm just not sure about it. Little Jimmy got life and Tamika around the corner just took her person off the pipe. The other homie shot the other homie and ran off with his money and when the other homie talked about it, 
They thought that it was funny. But who's the dummy? Cause now you done lost the hustler. A down ass brother done been replaced by a buster. And though I got Man. Person off the pipe. The other homie shot the other homie and ran off with his money. And when the other homie turned about it, they thought that it was funny. But who But who's the dummy? Cause now you done lost the hustler. Uh, I think he's saying hustler in a good way. All right, because then he says a down ass brother can never be replaced by a buster. So he's saying the guy that went and got his diploma, all right, was a hustler because he was out there uh, getting shit done that he needed to do in order to uh, be able to stand on his own two feet. All right. See, and I like that he says this. And though I got love for you, I know I can't trust you. So he's saying, this dude that, that went out there and did that, he's saying, I got love for you. I know I can't trust you. So I think what he's saying, all right, this is something I've said. I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, he's saying, you became a product of your environment. Uh, you are not like this because you're bad and evil. You're like this because society has turned you into a monster, has caused you to be corrupted by all the evil and everything that was going on in your life that's now, you know, created another monster, all right? You know, and that's really at the heart of the song. To me, that's what the song is about. It's about saying, you know, of course we can't let these guys just, you know, not get punished for it because, well, you did take someone's life. Well, you did rob somebody. You know, well, you did do these horrible things. But can't we evaluate the situations that has led you to that point and say, can we start fixing those problems so we can stop creating people that are going to become like you. Can't we do that? But instead, we want to say, we're going to fix the problem with a whole bunch of band-aids. All right. So we're going to keep pulling out the monsters, thinking that's going to fix the problem. But society in those areas, wherever poverty rates are high, wherever crime rates are high, is creating, you know, tons and tons and tons of people that are going to keep the problem going. And yet, we want to say, let's just keep removing all the, all the problem people instead of going in and saying, let's fix the root of the problem all right it's like no we don't give a crap about that we'll just keep taking out the people that's been corrupted by this society in these areas instead of saying can we make the schools better can we provide centers to help uh educate these kids about how to you know conduct their their selves as they start getting older how to stay out of trouble. Teach them about criminal law so that they're more prepared to avoid certain things that's going to get them in trouble because that's going to start a chain reaction. Once you start going down that wrong road, it's going to get harder and harder and harder to turn your life around. All right. It's as simple as that. Why uh, teenagers aren't learning about criminal law, I have no idea. Like, that's the whole point of school, is to get them prepared to live in society. Uh, teach them about criminal law. At least the stuff that's going to be the most important right off the bat. You know what I'm saying? For real. Because my crew is rolling Hummers. And your crew is rolling Dustus. Dustus.
I'm going to have to look that word up too because I'm not familiar. I think he might be talking about guns because I've heard some people say that when you get killed, you're getting dusted. So maybe that's where that term comes from. I don't, I don't know. Let me see. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. Put in the comments if y'all understand that better. I love that right there, y'all. He says, I believe I can reach, but your mind ain't prepared. You ain't ready to hear the truth. You ain't ready to hear that you have become a product of your environment. You ain't ready to hear that. Um, But I think most people probably would be ready to hear that. They probably want to hear that. They probably want to hear society stand up and recognize, you know, you've done some horrible crap, but it's not all your fault. You know, if you back a man into a corner and you make him feel threatened, right? Uh, and he lashes out and punches and kicks you. Are, can you really stand there and say, how could you do that to me, right? Can you really hold him at fault and say, hey, he, he hit me. He kicked me in the stomach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can you really do that? No. You shut the corner at that man. You made him feel like he, you could get ready to attack him. Hell yeah, he's going to strike. Think he's not? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can't do that. So that's, that's how I feel that we're doing as a society, right? But we back them into a corner. We make everything difficult for them. And, it can, man, you know, already know, here we go. Some of you guys are going to see this and then you're going to think, oh, he's saying all black people are victims, right? That's bull. I'm telling you right now, that's a bunch of bull, and it's a load of crap, all right? It's not about all black people. It's not even about black people, all right? If you want to know the truth, it's about people who live in certain areas that are poverty-ridden. That's what it's about. You know, you take a, a trailer park, that's run down and people being backed up against the wall. I'm still talking about those people too. It's not just about color. All right. So, I mean, do you really need any further explanation than that? You know, it's about anybody who's had a rough start in life. And because of that, they're still struggling because they, they started with the rough hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, can't we look at those people and say, sure, you've done some horrible stuff and we can't just let that slide. But can't we also say that if you haven't reached the, the point that you can't come back from, you know what I'm saying? Then can't we give them a, a, a fresh start? Can't we at least do something to help them out? Then they could become a productive member of society all right and if we kept doing that for everybody that needed help not saying we let everything slide not saying we just put them on easy street nothing like that but if we at least try to help every single person right uh i mean that's what i think we should be doing I'm supposing this was probably a robbery. I don't know if it was a real story or not. All right. It could be. 
Um, but I'm I'm supposing it was probably a robbery. Uh, probably because he needed money to pay his bills. If society would have stood up and helped him get what he needed a legitimate way, right? Uh, then that robbery wouldn't have happened. You now have two productive members of society that came from this area. But now you've lost one definite productive member of society and you've lost another possible productive member of society because you guys didn't help him. All right. Could be. Could also be because he's just that type of person. That's possible too. I'm not saying everybody who does anything wrong is just needing help. I'm not saying that shit. I'm just saying a lot of times that could be the situation. So why can't we at least examine that? When you catch them for small, insignificant crimes that's nonviolent, you know what I'm saying? You get them with a possession charge instead of just sending them off to prison. Why not uh, help sign them up for programs and help them get back on their feet? Why not ask that person and say, have you been trying to get a job? Are you trying to, you know what I'm saying? What's the what's the situation? Why do you have to go and sell drugs in order to survive? I think we need to, to rectify this problem for you. So you don't keep going down this, this path. All right? Can't we do that? I don't see why not. You know, someone has a drug addiction. Uh, there's rehabs for that. There's places they can go and get help. Uh, there's no rehab for people that are just poor and broke and don't have a have a chance. You know what I'm saying? There is way too much truth in this song, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So you don't get caught slipping when they come and do all the getting. Life is a big game, so you got to play it with a big heart. All right. All the kidding, life is a big game, so you gotta play it with a big heart. Some of us gotta run a little faster, cause we gotta lay the start. But I'll be a fool to surrender when I know it. Some of us gotta run a little faster, cause we gotta later start. Oh man, and what have I been saying? People that got a rough start in life, so you gotta run faster than everybody else. Other people that was born with. At least, you know, some financial security. They don't have to work as hard to get ahead in life. They, they already have, you know, a pretty good start. But if you're born with nothing, you're going to have to work. And if you don't, you know, and it's not even just uh, the effort. You could put all the effort in the world in it. If you don't have the knowledge and the understanding of, you know, solutions to getting ahead in life, like there, there's not very much hope for you. They're, they're just not. You know, but if you don't have the knowledge to go with it, uh, there's not a whole lot you can do. You know what I'm saying? Do we have, for example, is there any 1-800 numbers that you can call? And talk to uh, people that would help you find a game plan 
to find jobs, to find help, find programs to get you back on your feet? Is there any 1-800 numbers for that? I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? Why can't we have those? Why can't we have resources that is accessible to everybody and be able to at least get something on the record so that if that person gets in trouble, they can pull up that record and say they were asking for help. They weren't given any help, and so they went and robbed somebody because they were going home and looking at their kids, and their kids were asking them for food. They didn't have anything. All right. Can't we humanize these people a little bit instead of just villainizing them and saying, well, you're just a horrible, evil person. I could never do that. Uh, don't say that until you walk at least a mile in their freaking shoes. All right. Walk a mile in their shoes. Go home and... You know, see their kids asking for food, and you have to sit there and say, you don't have anything. And get up the next day and then do that again. I don't have anything. I, <laughs> there's nothing I can do. But I'd be a fool to surrender when I know I gotta be a contender. Absolutely. Not saying, you know, they should just give up when they're in that kind of situation. You, you can't. You cannot just give up. You got to keep fighting. All right. Whatever it takes, uh, don't go down the path of being a criminal. Um, you know, I don't know what the answer is, though. I know that's not the answer. I know that's not going to make anything any better. I mean, even if you rob a few people and get away with it, those people are now traumatized because of being robbed. Like, that's not, that's not being a productive member of society. Uh, so, what, what's the answer? I don't really know. I think probably having resources to help those people at least have a, a life coach or something that's available for everybody have life coaches as a whole program for specific areas that needs it. Take each person in, let them talk to you, explain their situation, and see what you can do to help them. All right? You know, if they say they're looking for work, but they can't get any because of their background, uh, then find something they can do. Find some work they can do. You know, if you guys are in a position to have uh, better resources and better understanding of, you know, well, there's a temp agency, you know, right up the street. Go up there and put in an application. They will take people with a background like yours. All right. Imagine how beneficial that would be to that person. But if they don't know it, you know, they're, they're not going to know, all right? They might get lucky and stumble upon that place and put in an application. But that's where an organization that, that their whole thing is devoted to helping people in situations like that, that could really make a big difference, y'all. If everybody's a sinner, then everybody can be a winner. No matter your rag color, deep down, we all brothers. Rag color. I'm not sure what he means by rag color, y'all. And regardless of the time, somebody up there still loves us. Okay. So he's saying God still loves us. I'm 
I'm going to scuffle and struggle until I'm breathless and weak. I just strived my whole life to make it to the mountain peak. So he's saying, he's put in the work, all right? He's gave it everything he's got. He's at the top of the mountain, and he's breathless and weak. Then he says, always keep reaching. Be sure to grab hold of something. I'll be there when you get there, when you with the sounds bumping. I'll be there when you get there. I think that probably should have said when you hear the sounds bumping. Okay, it is wrong, y'all. So the actual lyrics, I'll be there when you get there, waiting with the sounds bumping. All right. They missed the H. Uh... Can you please start spell checking when you're making these lyric videos, man? You're defeating the whole purpose of making a lyric video. <laughs> oh, man, y'all. Stop doing this to me. Oh man, y'all. And live a little. And if you got kids, let them know how you're feeling for your own sake, give a little. And for your own sake, give a little. Uh oh, you don't want to hear that. You busy trying to stack. Oh, you don't want to hear that. You busy trying to stack. And what he's talking about is this whole me, 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 me shit. You know, people that's trying to stack up their bankrolls, right? And they ain't trying to, to spend anything on anybody else, even their own kids. That ain't right. You know what I'm saying? And keep up with the Jones. Taking advantage of your own. Oh, man. So I think what he's talking about here is like jonesing for another high. All right. I think that's what he's talking about. People that are trying to stay high all the freaking time. You know, no matter what is going on around them, that's all they're focused on. Uh, and And what's the answer? The answer is... They need help. They need people to come to them and say, look, you have a problem. You know, you're not able to care for your children in this condition that you're in. You know what I'm saying? So there is that. The realest homie that you've been knowing for the longest. But some ain't missing a good thing until it's gone. Could have built an empire if not for the jealousy that divides us. There's a, quite a bit here that I need to unpack. You know what I'm saying? Quite a bit. Uh, they would then be missing something that they had when they started. 
So they would then be missing something that they had before. All right. We say that some people will ain't missing a good thing until it's gone. So not everybody is like that, where they take everything for granted. Uh, some people, he's saying, are, you know, born with advantages, and they realize that. Uh, so I think he's he, he's making a distinction there. Like that's there's a difference. Some people just take it take it for granted and say, you know, well, you're just evil and wrong uh, because you were born into poverty. All right. And he's putting himself on a high horse. Like, I got all these things. Why can't you? Uh, there's a phrase that explains why. You ever heard the phrase, it takes money to make money? There's your explanation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, if you could buy a hotel and charge people rent to stay there, you would be making decent money, all right? The problem is, though, it takes a lot of money to buy something like that. You know, if you had the money to buy a piece of land and sell that to somebody, who wants to go and build a house on that piece of land and charge, you know, and pay you rent for that land. Uh, you could do that, but it takes a lot of money to do that. You can't just do that by wanting to do that. You see what I'm saying? Like, you could want that all you want. But if you don't have the money to buy something like that, then it's it's not going to do you any good thinking about it now, is it? So, there you go. Could have built an empire if not for the jealousy that divides us. I I think now I'm I'm starting to put everything together with this line right here. So I think he's saying, um, uh, if the guy that is you know, looking for handouts because he's he's in poverty. He doesn't have anything. If it wasn't for the jealousy, then, you know, he wouldn't be mad at this other guy who has all these things. He wouldn't be mad at him. He would instead want to build an empire with him. But the problem there is, you know, he has to find the right person who gives a crap about somebody who doesn't have anything to contribute to build an empire with. All right. So that's the thing. Like you could go and pester that guy all you want. If you don't have anything of wealth or, or anything to contribute to help him, he's probably not going to care one way or the other. All right. That's just how it is. All right, let's take a look at this. We prefer to keep our eyes shut to describe when it's something wrong and we desire. So hold your head up high if you're poor and righteous. I, I got you. So he's saying if you're poor and you're still not going... And trying to rip people off and not doing all these horrible things to other people. Trying to, you know, survive. Then he's saying, hold your head up. Because, you know, you're making the best out of your situation. And you're realizing that taking advantage of other people isn't the answer. It might be the answer for right here and right now. Uh, but in the long run, that's going to lead to either you severely hurting somebody else or getting caught and going to jail for a really long time. All right. And then I want to address this top line here, too. So I think what he's saying here 
is that if you bring this to someone's attention, um, they're going to hold their head in the sand. They don't want to hear it. Especially if they have anything that, you know, especially if they're in a position where they could do something about it. Because then the question comes, well, why haven't you done anything about it before? Right? So they're like, ah, I'm just going to ignore it. I don't want to address it because then, well, I'm going to look guilty. And that's not right. You know what I'm saying? Stop worrying about your image. Stop worrying about what people are going to think about you. You know, what I would say, think about what people might think in the future. When people see that you're doing what needs to be done, that you're willing to to help people that are in need, that should be more important. Okay, so gather up your pity and turn it to ambition. And put your vehicle in drive and stop by my side. So he's basically saying, like, don't give up. Keep fighting the good fight. Keep working on, you know, making your life better without making other people's lives worse. All right. That's not the answer. It may seem like it is. It may seem like, you know, everything's going to be fine if we just get through this hurdle. Whatever we got to do, you know, that's not going to make anything better. That's going to make society worse. Um, oh, man. As we walk down the road of our destiny, and the time comes to choose which it gonna be. The wide and crooked or the straight and narrow. We got one voice to give and one life to live. Man. I mean, it, it pretty much summarizes my entire uh, philosophy so far. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the two paths, right? The straight and narrow or the wide and crooked. The wide and crooked is not only not going to help you, it's also not going to help society. All right. Uh, nothing good is going to come of that. Like, at all. And he's saying, you got one voice to give and one life to live. You don't get another chance. This is your life. Uh, you know, it's, you get one deck, you get one hand. That's it. If you get a bad hand, then you're going to have to figure out a way to make it work. You don't get another one. All right.
Oh man, y'all, what a song. What a message. You know what I'm saying? Like, the song is perfectly illustrated from the movie that it was in. And I think that has to be, like, the whole thing. That has to be why the song was chosen. It, it makes perfect sense. You know, I absolutely love that. You know what I'm saying? Because at the start of this, if you remember, I was like, well, I don't know the exact context of the song because it's been so long since I heard it. But I knew the context of the movie, what the movie was trying to say. All right. And that was that Martin Lawrence's character, I don't remember what his character's name was in the movie. All right. Uh, but just in case maybe you guys haven't seen it or maybe it's just been so long ago, the basic premise is because Martin Lawrence had his back pushed up against the wall, had no hope or very little uh, of making ends meet, you know, trying to get his bills paid, trying to get rent paid, but nobody hiring him, probably because of his background, because he had probably been in a lot of trouble. So what decision does he make? He's going to go and try and rob uh, Nick B, is what the guy's name was in the movie. All right. Uh, so throughout the movie, Nick B was like, you know, you're just a horrible person. You tried to rob me. You, you're you're evil, basically. Until they actually become friends. And he finds out, like, this dude's back was up against the wall. That's why he was acting out. That's why he was trying to rob me. Uh, Because, basically, he's going home and looking at his kids. And they're asking for food. And he, he ain't got none. You know, his, his landlord's asking for rent money. And he's like, I ain't got none, buddy. I don't know what to tell you, right? So, it, the perfect choice of a song uh, for that movie. That movie, y'all, is brilliant. I'm telling y'all, uh, you know, I am definitely going to have to look for some reactions to that movie because I love movie reactions. Especially movies that has a strong message to tell. I seriously doubt anybody is really going to put everything together like I just did. With the song they played at the end. Um, and I remember when I used to watch that movie a lot when I was younger. And I was like, this is a great song. Because it's talking about clarity when you... When a person comes to realize, like what Nick Beam's character realized at the end, was that, you know, this dude just needed help. Someone needed to help this guy. That's why he tried to rob me, because nobody was helping him, right? And that was his moment. That was Martin Lawrence sitting there saying, I'll see you when you get there, when you finally realize that I'm not a bad person. It's just that society has turned me into a bad person. But deep down, I don't like the person I've become. I'm not trying to be a, a robber. I'm not trying to be a bad person. It's just that I don't know what else to do. All right. So at that moment when they both started realizing like, Hey, I kind of get it now. I understand. You know what I'm saying? So, there you go. Uh, this right here, y'all. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful movie. All right. There's one scene in it, however, that I absolutely hate. Some of you guys already know what that scene is. I do love the fact, however, that they were both afraid of that thing that was in that was on his head. Okay, <laughs> they were both afraid of it. He said, "I ain't touching that shit." 
I don't blame you, Martin Lawrence. I wouldn't touch it either. I probably would have done exactly what he did. Jump out of the car and start jumping around. <laughs> trying to get it off of him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't like those things, especially that. Oh, hell no. Like, I don't know how y'all can live out there with those things. In case, some of you guys probably still don't know what I'm talking about. Because maybe y'all didn't see the movie. I'm talking about creatures that specifically has eight legs. All right. I don't like those. Just in case I got some trolls in the comments. Uh, don't do it. You'll be wasting your time. All right. Already know how some people are. Uh, I don't appreciate trolls trolling people about their phobias. I got a right to phobia really bad. Don't push it. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's it.